Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. We're ready. We're ready yes. I'll just. Uh... Yes, but what is more comment? We have already set up uh, because we have already organized this. And uh, YouTube streaming channel for the presentation probably is much better because we have video integration of me talking and the slides. It's okay. I can't hear a word you're saying there. I'm afraid. Yes, I have just. Are oh, you on mute? Oh, sorry. Sorry, I was mute. Sorry. I'm just saying that I, since we have a center education infrastructure here. I have just put um, a URL for doing the streaming via YouTube because with there we have better image, image quality and, and handling my images and something like that. Perhaps we can do the presentation via YouTube and then come back here for the questions? That would probably make a lot of sense. Um, um, I will give you the uh, screen anyway. Yes. But I am ha I'm happy to open a browser if everyone else is happy to open a browser. Okay, so. So I will make you presenter. Okay. Let me. There's someone coming in right now and won't wait for name. Okay. A couple of others coming in. So we'll just wait a few more minutes, uh, a minute or two. Yeah, yeah, no problem. We have a minimal, uh, a small problem. Is that the one that was going to talk about how to start everything in using Docker is not here, have to attend something related to, to his uh, taxes, so he could not avoid be there. The problem is that I don't know all the commands, so perhaps we can have a small part complementary to this uh, with all the tricks uh, with the Docker. Hello? Yep, um, that, that'll be fine. I'll just send one more uh, quick email. Okay, okay, no problem. Mm. Right, so. So let's say that the person that was going to talk and let's say ask uh, solve all, all the problem about starting everything in Docker could not be here today. He has uh, taxes with the tax government and appointment that he could not uh, avoid this address okay so i will right. present okay. everything and but uh, i um, i know all the details but I, I don't know the commands i mean i cannot help with the uh, you know what i mean no that uh, i can explain everything but the, the this this could be done uh, by andres in some other moment uh, perhaps next week or something like that okay we can uh, um uh, we I can uh, make a small so session, just the practical part. Okay, no problem with that. Right, so uh, I'll get started the next uh, 30 seconds. What I will do is I will, uh, I will start the record button, I will introduce, I will then pass the uh, um, uh, screen control to you, and if you want to uh, uh, get us all go over to YouTube, that's fine. Okay. Uh, at that, at that way I will try and record as well. Yes. Okay. So okay. Count the countdown of uh, fifteen seconds then. Perfect. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. This is the second uh, accelerator webinar about this time about uh, core context management, being run by Joaquim uh, Salvatierra of the uh, University Politécnica de Madrid. And uh, I will pass straight over to uh, uh, Joaquim. So here we go. Hello, good evening. I hope um, you're having a nice evening. And then in, in this case, uh, I want to share with you that uh, that, that uh, perhaps the presentation, in, in, in order that you don't see just the slide, and you see me uh, it's a bit better, I'm sharing here a URL for a YouTube streaming that we are doing right now in parallel with this. So the idea is that I will do the presentation over there, and this way uh, you have a much better experience on, on, on this. I don't know if you have any problem with the URL, you just tell me and then we start. And thank you, Jason, for the invitation to, to talk here. I'm with also with uh, Professor Gabriel Huecas. I don't know if you see if anyone is in the streaming. 
Hej. Hej. <laughs> Have you all managed to see the streaming? Yes, no, abort, retry, ignore. Perhaps there is no channel. Oh, yes, can see. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. So if everyone... Okay, thanks. So uh, I will go um, to make the presentation and even I am going to do it, you can uh, ask, interview me anytime, no problem on this and we start doing the presentation. Oh, I mean, okay, oops. I have a problem here with the GoToMeeting. Just a second, I put it over there. Okay. So our talk today will be about uh, the Impact Growth uh, Accelerator webinar on the core context management. As you know, the core context management is the one that is taking care of the NGSI standard and with this we have several ways of handling this kind of, of things. Uh, most of them are in our case is related to also big data analysis. In order that you ca can perform all line of analysis or also complex event processing or whatever, you can use the tools that we are going to introduce you. There are several uh, ways of doing right now analytics, uh, map reduce, income memory, etc. Or most of them need the, the data. Some of them need the data in a batch. This means that we have to have everything stored in some place, uh, but the, the advantages is that in some moments uh, we need uh, or we are able to handle data uh, in real time. This means that we can have some kind of fast data architecture, what it was called a year ago, and in this case it is something like a, a, an Aeon, it was called the Lambda architecture and things uh, related to, to this. So you see our firewall infrastructure, we have the context broker, they are connected to uh, some strange component that is called Cygnus that will take care of all the kind of interaction that we want to do with uh, uh, it's the other way around. Here you have the Cygnus and you will have also connection with the big data and also with the short term historic that is over there. This is quite related to the context broker that is over here. Uh, I look like the, people, like the one that make the, the, the weather show, sorry for this, but uh, uh, so the, here we have uh, the context broker, that is the Orion, that is the one that will take care of everything. In parallel we have here SICAN and also we have over here the, the EOT or the one that processes these kind of things. You can use then uh, complex event processing, even now we are adding also in big data uh, Apache Flink that will take care also of the complex events processing. Over top of it we have all the applications that we have uh, we work with this, can work with the data from the context broker or the data that we provide with the components that we are going to talk uh, today. Oh, this is uh, here. Well, uh, the, the usual joke, uh, we are going beyond Orion, so you have uh, seen a lot of things in Orion, and beyond Orion you know the, the Tannhauser gates and this kind of freaky, freaky jokes. So we are focusing on the NGSI, uh, the NGSI is the standard that we have. It's quite relevant because it's not only the serialization of the data, you can do it with JSON. Uh, here we have the semantic of the data. This is quite important because up to now none of the standards has taken care uh, of this. Even is uh, ongoing, something that is related to NGSI uh, LD, where we have RDF and all the power of the semantic web. This will come uh, very soon. So we have three components that take care of the NGSI subscriptions. We have the last value, this is the audio context broker, probably you have uh, done a lot to the work with it. You can uh, handle all the registration and all the events and when everything changes you get uh, an event and you know uh, what is happening. But uh, the idea is that the audio context broker has just the last value or perhaps the last value, depends on, on the implementation. This means that if you want to know exactly what it has right now, you have to use the Orion Contest Broker. But if you want to have an historical, we have two solutions. One solution that is packed in one single program, that is the common STH, the short-term historic, 
uh, that keeps a small historic uh, uh, log of the different value that you have in the context broken. Also have some queries can, that can do aggregation. We will see about it later. But for example, if you are monitoring the temperature in a room, with the audio context broker you have the temperature that the sensor is saying that is happening right now. With the short-term historic, depending on the size, you can have uh, the values for the last month, for example, and you can ask it for the mean value. This means that not only gives you the raw historic, but is able also of doing some application over there. So simple applications uh, or simple aggregation operations can be done uh, with the comet. And if you want to use all the historic, there you have uh, side news. There you can connect everything to different databases, even at the same time, we'll see this later. You, you, you don't need to connect to a single database. You can make uh, f events uh, filtering and decide that some events can go to one or another. Even there is a, a work going on to have a serialization on, on, even on, on blockchain. So I will introduce uh, a bit about the state edge comet. The presentation has a lot of slides, but since uh, we are in a, in a short time, I just will present the main ones. Uh, I will leave it to you later in order you can use for reference. And as uh, I said before, uh, we can have a small session next week where Andres, that could not be here today, can solve you all the problems on how to start everything with Docker and these kind of things. So, uh, as we uh, said before, the context broker just had the last value and the short-term historic uh, gets uh, the last ones. Not all of them is limited in capacity, but the advantage is it's very simple uh, to use and very simple to uh, install components. It's a self-contained application that uh, basic basically is an ODS uh, web server that takes care of the NGSI registration with the, uh, with the Orion and also um, a MongoDB database that will keep uh, everything over there. So we have some kind of time series database where we have different things. We have raw data, we can get, as I tell you, give me uh, the last values for a temperature in a room uh, in, in last week and we get a, a series of them, or we can have also some kind of aggregation. We can have pagination and so all the things that you usually have in this kind of databases or in web applications. Probably all, most of you are used to this kind of, uh, these kind of things. It's a build with a REST API. This REST API is quite flexible, allows you a lot of things and allows you to uh, do uh, several, several things on this. So how it works? I mean, you can ask, instead of asking things to the Orient Contest Broker, you just handle Stignus or another component, even you can connect directly, uh, here we have just the, the Stignus solution, but it's not needed, you can connect directly to MongoDB. Uh, there, you, what you will get is that uh, we can connect and uh, have a different uh, subscription to the context that you have in an Orion Contest Broker. Uh, you cannot get rid uh, of foreign context brokers and this is the key of the old architecture. What we are saying is the different things that you can connect to an Orion context broker. So the Orion context broker, we talk via Signos or directly with uh, STH Comet and we serialize everything on the MongoDB database. So you as a client, yet you from this moment, once you have set up this with the usual registrations, uh, the registration is the same one that you are using in the Orion Contest Broker, you can start querying the REST API that uh, STH Comet is offering. This solution is not for everyone, but I think that can solve a lot of problems. If you don't want to have a complex Cygnus installation, as we will see later, that we can do, uh, you can use it in a very simple way. Use these components, and if your problem matches uh, what we are offering here, I say the, the last values, then you have uh, everything solved. Uh, even uh, we can make it without Cygnus and we can have the connection directly to the context broker. Uh, this is the most simple scenario that probably if you want to not uh, get full serialization or later do some kind of complex big data analysis or something similar, uh, this will be more easy. So you just need uh, the stage comments your application and the context broker. Take into account that from this moment you don't need to query the context broker. You just query the uh, STH comment. This 
perhaps simplify your architecture depending on the problems that you have. We can uh, talk about this uh, later in the, in the question time. As I tell you, it's uh, developed using a, a web server, happy, that is built uh, upon Node.js and we have a MongoDB optimized for a time series uh, way of working. Uh, in principle, uh, the MongoDB database is not uh, exposed. This means that if you want to have your own MongoDB solution, you probably need to have uh, a direct connection via Cygnus. But in some cases, you can access to this MongoDB. Uh, I mean, it's not protected, uh, it's protected, but uh, I mean, if you are in control of everything, you can get access to it and you can get uh, all the things you, you have. I'm not mentioning here uh, the security that probably uh, you have some explanation on this, but if you want to secure this, you have to put uh, the pep proxy that is called Vilma here and everything will be uh, secure. I'm just talking about uh, this part and so I don't take into account the security. But uh, take into account that if you know, want to do a DR deployment, you need the part that is related to the, to the other things. So uh, here we have different data schemas and also we have uh, different uh, pre-aggregations uh, on this. So uh, you are able not only to give the raw data, but also different uh, way of giving these things. So as I tell you, give me uh, the maximum in, in that happens in, in last weeks, probably at least in Spain is today, yeah, it's quite hot here, or give me the main value uh, for today, or give it a range, I mean you can do a lot of uh, simple uh, queries. It's not pretended to have complex queries, if you want to have queries more complex than this, you have to program them in using Thignus, but uh, we have uh, a very good, uh, uh, let's say, a set of, of aggregations that probably solve, let's say, the, the 80 or the 90 percent of, uh, of the problems. So we can have uh, different things and we have uh, here uh, some numeric pre-aggregation so we can have uh, some, some different values. Everything is serialized in JSON so you can comment and, and get here. Since we are having a REST API, uh, we have here uh, just the, the way to get the connection. Here we have the, the this is the, the REST API. Uh, we can connect to the entities. Here we have the entities uh, type and name that is the one that you have in the in the Orion Contest Broker. And after this, we will get uh, receiving uh, the, the solution here. Also, if you want to have everything secure, you need to add uh, the security token. You can have pagination, if we are querying for a big uh, amount of data, you need to do uh, some kind of pagination. Here we have the, the different response, so you have here the, the name and the attributes, and here you have the, the different values and the different responses. We can ask uh, for aggregated data, the previous one we have for some data, and here I'm saying that they want just uh, the sum, that's in the, the added values, from uh, one date uh, to another date. And this means that we will get this. And here the solution, just instead of be a, a series of values, it's just one value, that is the mean value. The, well, it's not the mean, it's the, the sum. But you get the, 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 the different uh, responses. You can remove the data. If you think that the data in some uh, moment is uh, not the right one, you can ask for removing. Uh, you can connect this with different kind of login services, so in order that you can Depends on the infrastructure, you can handle these different types of logs. And, and there we have this, this solution. The other solution, as I tell you, is Cygnus. Cygnus is uh, completely different. It's not more complex, but since it's uh, very, very configurable, means that uh, we have a very simple configuration that probably you need to change. The advantage of the stage comet is that you don't have to do any configuration on this. You install it, uh, I don't remember right now if it's just uh, one Docker container or two, uh, but you install it and you start querying the, the, the REST API and you don't need to do anything. The advantages of Cygnus is that we are right now uh, adding all the things you need to for a fast data architecture. This means that we'll be more flexible and will allow a lot of things. Inside of it, it just has a pub subscribe like communication model. It's not real pub subscribe, it's just a metaphor in order that you can, uh, let's say, program the work uh, it is uh, done. So it will get 
in this uh, pub subscribe mode different context uh, broker notifications and it can serialize to different sync what is called syncs the syncs will be the usually the persistent layer that could be depending on the architecture different databases you can connect one or more why is this because probably you don't you can don't have uh, one single type of data perhaps you have data from users and you want to send this to a relational database you have a lot of historical data you want to say to to mongo to cassandra or to whatever perhaps you have graph information and want to send to a graph database or you want to do big data and you want to send it to an hdfs uh, uh, storage system Everything could be done at the same time. You don't have to choose. I mean, one Cygnus can connect to several databases at the same time, and even we can filter the events. They decide that one event has to go to one point, or the events can go to, to another. Well, have here some definitions. So the, the main architecture is the one that we have here. So in this case, uh, we can have a web server or the Orion Contest Broker. Inside uh, Cygnus, we define these entities. These are not real entities, I mean, there is no communication, so the latency is quite low. And we define something that is called source. The different sources will go to one or more channels, and we define one or more things. The trick of having channels is what I told you before. You can filter whatever you receive from the events, the same events can connect to several channels. These channels can filter what they send to the sinks or not. And you can have several sinks. You can have several sinks with the same information if they are connected to the same channel. Or via different channels, we can connect uh, to different sinks, sending different information. This means that this is very, very configurable. But this also means that, in some cases, have an extra layer of, of complexity installing everything. It's not too much. You can install uh, our component in, in several ways. We have uh, the most usual configurations uh, ready. So if you don't want to do anything quite complex, you can do it and it's uh, quite simple to, to do it. Don't, don't worry, it's not really complex. Right now we are having a lot of, of connections. Uh, we can connect if you want to do big data with the HDFS. Uh, we are having support for uh, the more used relational database in most applications, that is MySQL. If you want to publish uh, open data that is also connected to the market, you can serialize this to Zcan. MongoDB that we are using here, even you can connect to an SSH comet. I mean, this is compatible. You can have Cygnus and SSH comet. With Cygnus, you capture everything. You still can have HTTP comment and main communications with it. We have already providing connectors to Kafka. This way, you can make pub subscribe depending on the infrastructure. We can you can connect also with DynamoDB, with PostgreSQL, CartoDB, Cassandra, and now we are working on a blockchain connector. Also, we have some experiment with Twitter, but well, this is something that probably you don't need. Here we have some examples. And what we have here is the model. As I told you before, the model is that I provide a source, later I provide a channel, and later I provide a sync. These are defined here in a text file. The text file is the configuration file. We provide simple for this. And what you declare here is that you have uh, a source, a sync, and a channel. This is the simpler configuration, where the source just takes connection from HTTP and the port 5050. Uh, the sync is a simple one, uh, and, uh, and that could be the CTU uh, database, and the channel is whatever, just let pass everything. So, you just have to provide uh, this, uh, this connection, and depending on the uh, things that you want to have, you have to install the required database or the required system that you are willing to use. Uh, as I tell you, we, we can help you with the con different connections. We have a lot of examples and we can uh, guide you on, uh, on this. For example, if you want to send information to multiple backends, this is I tell you before, you just define uh, a single source, that is the one that will be connected to a web or could be connected to the Orion Contest Broker. We define three channels and these three channels, what is sending are the events and the um, NGSI information to three different things. 
the three different things could be uh, three different databases for three different purposes. For example, HDFS for big data, uh, a relational one for some information, and a NoSQL one for some other, other queries. In principle, the channels are uh, transparent, I mean, they uh, provide all the events from one side to another, but you can use some filtering. I mean, that some channels can provide to the thing they are connected, not all the uh, events they are receiving, but just the one that fulfills some kind of uh, predicate. They are also, uh, since this run inside a Java virtual machine, and this means one unit process, if you are having a lot of uh, traffic, you probably, instead of having this thing, you need to do this kind of, uh, of the instance. This instance, we have three processes, three different Java machines, and this means that the performance for this is quite much uh, better. In other cases, you need to provide three containers or you need to provide three virtual machines or three different machines in your network. Uh, probably this is required for a very, very high throughput and you are none of you facing this kind of problem. Probably uh, the previous before is the one that can work here. So we just have to connect uh, the Oreo Content Broker in the usual way. You just register and subscribe to some of the events. And once the events are flowing, they flow through the connection, through the, con the configure file that you provide and uh, they are uh, all in serialized. This means that Cygnus didn't have any kind of processing, just can filter the things, decide when to, where to send, and you later have to use another tool. In the big data part, we provide um, some tools, we can probably will see in another day, uh, and there you can do these things to uh, work with the data that you have in the different databases. So Cygnus is not intended for processing. In the previous case, STH uh, Comet, already have some simple processing and here since you are expected to have more complex processing it will have different tools for this and you can use any tool that is able to read the information from the database that you send uh, whatever information uh, you want. Here uh, we have a, a, a simple connection for example here is the same that I put before but now we, we connect to the context broker that uh, inside is an HTTP source and says to memory channels and in order to be fast and we put an HDFS uh, sync over here in order that you uh, send it to, to the big data part. If you want to publish some of the information and sell it, you can put in CCAN and perhaps some information also uh, related to user or whatever, you can put in a relational database inside the MySQL part. This means that it's quite flexible, so Probably, I don't know what problems you have, but Cygnus will solve it for sure. Some of them, you already have the configuration, and for others, you need to make just the configuration file. We can help you on this, and, and, and Andres can, and, uh, sorry, no, he's not here today, but he can answer all kind of these things uh, and, and via email or whatever way uh, that you want to have. We can have, if not, uh, some kind of other configuration. This is uh, how the, the things look like. We have the simple Cygnus configuration file. Uh, you have to declare, uh, this is the, the ones that correspond to the uh, model that we have seen before. So we have three different channels, uh, the sort, the signal, and the channel, and we define the different channel, the capacity, uh, usually uh, the things, uh, if you are doing the processing at a normal speed, you don't have to uh, have anything too quite complex. There are the definition of the different source, all the details uh, on, on this, also the details on the different things. This is the one that serialized to the HTFS, or uh, you can send uh, to another, another place. The, there are different uh, ways of doing the, the, the serialization depending on how you want to later process it. Usual they are done uh, in JSON rows or you can have JSON codes, it depends on the database you choose and how uh, this is handled. In this case, HTTPS will handle, I think, it's a plain text files, uh, but with the distribution that uh, Hadoop needs and will have it in, in, in this kind of way. As I tell you, we are now providing uh, integration with Kafka. 
this is still ongoing, but uh, the, you can start using it, and you are able to do uh, some fast data streaming uh, architecture. This is still under trial, but well, if you can ask uh, and try this, uh, this, this kind of things. There you can connect uh, the applications to a Kafka and then to the contest broker and then mm, no. It's the contest broker to Kafka or whatever, you can receive things there and later from Kafka or from contest broker you can connect to Cygnus and from it you can serialize the same way that we have uh, said before. We have here the configurations, the high availability, oh, I don't want to tell you that is with Zookeeper is quite complex, but this, this is if you have a very, very high uh, throughput that you need a lot of instance from, from Cygnus and to have everything uh, alive. As I tell you, we are doing right now a blockchain integration. Here we have a very simple smart contract that do these kind of things and we are uh, developing a uh, web 3G connector that allows to send it to the to Ethereum uh, the contest broker, the blockchain. Uh, probably we will able to, to give some sun on this uh, quite soon. So, uh, uh, this is the, the presentation uh, that was intended to give. I hope that uh, helps solve your, your problem. At least you have to know uh, what you have to use. I tell you the, the contest broker you already have. Uh, probably you need to have Cygnus or the short term historic. You don't need to have both. I mean, you can have, if your problem is solved without Cygnus, I would say don't use Cygnus, use just the short term historic. Uh, if your problem mm, requires some kind of serialization, then use Cygnus and connect uh, to whatever you need. And uh, in this way, we can solve all the data uh, persistence and all the things that you need or, or require. So we can move to the to the question time. Um, I go back here to with the, with here the the go to meeting. Any questions? I was too fast. I was uh, a bit boring. Hello, is there any there? Are you asleep in siesta time? Uh, that was excellent. Um, I was just going to uh, steal back the screen. Um, okay, so um, this is where, again, like uh, yesterday, you get to shine. Uh, if there are uh, any questions, please start uh, uh, putting them into the chat. If not, uh, I will start off with a, uh, a few uh, um, questions of my own. So the first question I have is, could you describe the correct use of the fireware header and how it, uh, or the fireware header and the um, uh, service path header, and how it affects what, where stuff goes in the database? Uh, excuse me, I don't have an, the, the, the header of, the, of what you are saying. The fireware service header and the fireware uh, service, the, the head is on the uh, request. When ah, you mean, well here everything, in principle, uh, everything goes to via the, the things. I mean, you're talking about Cygnus, everything is serialized in the database. Yeah, um, but where, uh, when I... Uh, have data coming in from a uh, an agent. Yes. I have a fireware service path and service header. Yes. And then how, how does how does the flow of data work from the uh, IoT agent to Orion to? Uh, um, oh yes, uh, uh, from the IoT the, you get the how IoT. Does the service path header affect this. Okay. Uh, the even uh, this day, the, these details uh, is more and there's the one that connect, uh, control is. Uh, from my point of view, what you have there is that uh, depending on the different uh, entities that you have in the contest broker, you get the, uh, the communication from the AT agent to these entities. The contest broker, as I said before, is keeping the last value that is provided by the AT agent. Uh, this means uh, that whatever a value is changed, 
it sends a notification to everyone that is connecting to this uh, value, to this uh, entity. These connections are sent to Cygnus, and as I tell you, Cygnus is not uh, very much intelligent. Whatever it receives is just serialized. So it's the logic that is inside the contest broker that decides when is the, where is everything going. So you relate your, your header to the entity that you are changing in your contest broker, uh, in your Orion contest broker, and since uh, Thickness or uh, stage commerce are subscribed to changes in this, these changes are propagated to Signal or to the STH comment and it's sent uh, to them. Then they serialize them and later you can do whatever you want with this kind of information. Then into account that we have present here is the different persistent solutions. In some cases we are making it more efficient not just for, for per persistence and, and batch study but we are also in this phase of getting the first data part so this means that you will get the notifications quite soon. So you can have different components over there that could be reactive over the things that happens on the IoT layer. I don't know if I solved your question or I have answered another thing. That. Yes, the Cosmos is uh, online. Uh, we have a small problem that we were adding more computers. Uh, right now we have a small problem with, uh, with OpenStack, uh, but uh, since last week they is already it's online and which match uh, uh, computer power. I don't know how many cores. 100 more cores, uh, and, and I don't remember right now in memory the details, but uh, it's online again and with more capability. Also, it's online, uh, we are able not just to provide, even there is still is not uh, a proper uh, documentation on this, we are not offering just uh, Hadoop and MapReduce, we are offering Apache Flink analysis, that is uh, mainly uh, uh, show, um, uh, the, the, the event uh, processing part and also we are offering a Spark Scala if you, you know this, this kind of thing you can send a Spark Scala jobs uh, also not just uh, Hadoop MapReduce ones. This is more simple for some people and more complex for another but we can talk then uh, later in, in Cosmos. Okay, I have a yes. Yes? I have another question here. Um, feedback. Um, right. Um, could you mute your for a second. Yeah, no more. Right, the... Uh, ah. <coughs> oh, you're still on there. I'll type the
Well, there are some stress uh, tests that have been done by the, um, let's say, the quality assurance group. Um, I don't have the numbers here, but I mean, um, let's say something. If your application is uh, not a real time with a lot of, uh, I mean, if you are not in a big data problem, a stage commit is, is enough. I mean, if you have something that uh, a usual in ODS web server can handle, I don't know by memory the, the numbers, but uh, uh, let's say that you are not in a very, very high number of, of, of communications, a stage comment is enough. Just remember that it has a limit in the, in the storage. It's not intended to have all the storage. I don't remember, you can configure this in the MongoDB, uh, but I, uh, there is one uh, pre-configuration. Um, but if none of you are having, let's say, uh, problems like uh, Twitter or one of these big platforms, probably you can go with the stage comment. Just that in that case, you get uh, the things in the MongoDB. The MongoDB is there, it's not intended to be accessed by you, but you can do it. Uh, and the idea is that you access uh, via the, uh, the, the REST API that you can do the aggregation or, or whatever. So if you are not having a real big data problem, STD, STH comment will be enough uh, for you. I can provide for the next day the exact numbers, but uh, I say that is quite high. But you have, uh, I don't know, millions of, of per second of transactions, probably not. But you are having hundred or, or this kind of per seconds or, or, or these kind of things it probably will, will be able to handle. I will get the, 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 the figures for, for next time. But as the other limitation is more on the storage than in the processing. I mean, uh, it's not storing all the data. If your data is changing a lot every second, probably a stage comment is just, uh, well, depend on your, on your window, on your data. You just need the, the last day, for example. It's no problem on this. But for most uh, typical sensors, uh, a stage comment is, is enough. And unless you have a whole, uh, let's say, a smart city sending all the information to one single stage comment is enough. Remember that you can have several stage comments. Uh, since uh, you are the one that are doing the registration to the different NGSI entities to the, to the cosmos, you can have several stage comments, one for uh, one or more uh, entities. You don't have, let's say, you have one or more cosmos and you have different entities there and you are registering to listen to depends on the changing of these entities. This means that I can have several stage comments if I have uh, problems on this. If when you have several stage comments, then you have to have some coordination, and this is the thing I, don't, I haven't told you about the Zookeeper. Zookeeper is a component from the Apache um, uh, project that handles the, the, the high availability of different components. It has a, a protocol inside it in order to decide which, which things are alive and to keep everything alive. But this is uh, for very complex scenario. For a simple one, I think that depending on the problem and the query you have to do with the data, a stage comment will be enough. And if not, you can put several stage comments, one for each entity uh, that you want to, to have. But I, I don't think that most of you have this, this problem. Okay, do we have any further questions? Sorry, but I have very bad uh, memory for numbers. <laughs> uh, this and the, and the project, uh, also for Apache project, uh, there's something that are, uh, my, my memory is not for, for numbers or for a new project. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, any more question? Do you have enjoyed our streaming uh, processing? Do you have a thing that is much better to see me on that just the slide? What is the feedback on this? Okay.
It's better than a slide and a talking <laughs> voice. Yes. Thank you. Silenciado. Ah, silenciado. Right, so um, if there are no further questions, we can uh, uh, wrap this up. I just uh, want to um, uh, thank Joachim for uh, giving his time uh, to us uh, uh, today um, and remind you that um, you can still use the, uh, the usual uh, um, methods to try and uh, get uh, any further questions. So um, uh, thank you very much. Sonido reactivado. Okay, thank you. Mm. Bye. Okay, so this is, was the talk that you expected, Jason, or you wanted uh, a bit different? Uh, that was fine. Um, I don't know why I got so much feedback on your, uh, from you at some point, but let's go to meeting for you. That's yes, perfect. the problem um, is that I, it was yeah. missing the part of how to start the Docker, but I don't know the memory, I don't know the details, and it has to be addressed. That is the one that is doing all day, you know? I have a couple of tutorials in progress on offering that anyway. So okay, if you but just need to look at the files. Really yeah, but uh, he, he's things. available by email. So if they, anyone has problem with the registration or anything, Andres is quite good on solving this. And and you see, this is our what I show you is our streaming way. That is the, the way that we do the MOOCs, the, the MOOCs builds. We have a simple installation here, that is the camera and a small chroma. And I think that this is a very cheap solution and it's quite uh, easy to use, as you have seen. Yeah, um, can we uh, get your recording of this? Yes, it's, it's, I think that is in the URL that it provides. I will ask the, the technical. Because I really don't trust GoToMeeting. <laughs> Yes, I mean, we, as you said, you've got, you've got better quality visuals. Yes, I mean, it, this, this streaming is going to the, to the YouTube and will be available on YouTube in a couple of minutes, I think. Well, probably you have to, I don't know how. But I will send you the okay, URL. So send me the link. Okay. So, yeah, uh, I think that was very good. Thank you very much. Thank you to you. Bye. Bye.